What is it? Guys, it is the Red Stone Scientist here. And I, long time no see, guys. Long time no see. It has been a long time since I've either live streamed or recorded a video. I have just been so swamped with camp stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the, the next six weeks video that I will link on screen and in the description. Uh, so, yes, I have just been too exhausted to really do live streams. I'm sorry about that. I've been doing a lot of work on version 2 of the new cutscene generator. So if you don't know what the cutscene generator is, that there will be a link on screen and in the description. It's sort of my claim to fame on YouTube. My, it's my most popular video with almost 20,000 views, and I would say probably at least 30,000 people use it. Um, and basically, and I mean, that's a really arbitrary guess <laughs> about the number of people who use it. Uh, but... Basically, what it is, is it allows you to create cutscenes in vanilla Minecraft with very, very, very few command blocks. So ordinarily, like when you would use Crush Pixels uh, cutscene filter, you would get thousands of command blocks for each cutscene. This only gives you one command block per cutscene plus the standard set. Um, and so you can find out more about it in the video that I said I would link. Uh, but anyway, I'm working on a version 2 of this because since then I've gotten so many feature requests, uh, so many, just like everything about... Uh, rough suggestions, bugs, and all sorts of things. So I'm recoding the entire thing from the ground up and releasing a advanced version 2 that I will, uh, that's going to be coming out in a few weeks. It's not just for Wesley, but for all you guys as well, and also for a commission project that I'm not at liberty to talk about right now. So I'm going to give you, uh, just to hold you over till I can get more content to you, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the new features so far. So first of all, in the new cutscene generator, the old one will still be there. Obviously, this is expanded with all the code visible. Um, it will, uh, it's going to look the exact same way it does now. Um, but this is the basic version. In order to reveal the advanced version, ad and the reason why I'm calling it an advanced version is because it is not for laymen. Um, really, you need to know how commands work in order to work this. Or, I mean, you don't really need to, but I would suggest it just because it's a lot more complicated the way it works. Uh, so there's going to be a button somewhere that allows you to unhide the master control panel sheet. So... Um, the old one's still going to be there, but here's the new one. Here's the master control panel, um, if this will just load. Um, the little images have to reload there. There we go. Okay, so this is the master control panel. It's a little bit wider than it's going to be in the final version just because I have all of this code visible. Um, but basically, I have a list here of the current additions to, to features. So in addition to all the old features of the original, unless I otherwise specify... Um, here are the new features. So one, it's going to support up to 50,000 points. The old one only supported up to 500. Um, and the reason why it's going to support up to 50,000 points is because it allows for up to 100 different paths. Because one of the most popularly requested features on the cutscene generator is I want to go from one location to another instantly and then continue the cutscene. Like, I want to go from here and then really far away and then continue the cutscene. Um, and the old one didn't allow for that. So rather than just having one continuous um, cutscene line path, um, I'm, I'm using some specific terminology here. So that when I say the cutscene, that refers to the entire thing that will be installed in your world. When I say path, that means one contiguous line of cutscene um, cut teleports. So... This allows for up to 100 different pads, and rather than controlling all of the points on the same page, this is the master control panel. You can actually create new sheets and name them whatever you want. So you can say, I want this path to be called, uh, I don't know, introduction, and I want this path to be called, you can call it whatever you want, and the cutscene generator will automatically adapt to your names. So, um, yes, yeah, so, so these are... Are, you just have as many of these, up to 100 of these sheets. Obviously, like I said, there's a lot of code over here that's going to be hidden. It's going to be a lot more simplified in the final version. So, um, yes. So, And one of the great things is you can actually reorder the paths over here. And one of the other really highly requested features is I want to be able to control the time in between each individual point rather than just getting the average time or the an equal amount of time between each. So let me continue down the list here of what I support. So, oh yes, yeah, so with the path, the multiple paths, when one path ends, the next one instantly begins. So that allows you to have like an instant teleport. So anyway, the time control. You can choose right here whether you want to set the time in seconds of the entire, or well, sorry, whether you want to set the time in seconds for each path or automatically set them all equal to sum up 
to a total time, which you would put over here. So if we set this to total time, this becomes unlocked. And you can customize values here, and you can see this column became gray because you can that no longer matters. So let's set it back to individual settings. So total time is sort of the way that the old cutscene generator worked in that every path on every point has um, the exact same length with the remainders distributed evenly. So um, I also am going to add support for game mode 0 and game mode 2 during cutscenes. The way that that's going to work is uh, basically it gives you levitation. So you can see here, if you select game mode 3, all invisible entities will be visible, except the hotbar will disappear. That's one of the complaints about the old version, is that um, in the old version, if you have you know a whole bunch of invisible entities and armor stands, you can see them when you're in the cutscene because you're in game mode 3. But this will actually, this is so, it's sort of a trade-off because um, the game mode 0 and game mode 2, the GUI will still be visible, so you'll still have the hotbar and everything, but it will keep invisible entities hidden. So the reason, the way this works is basically I give the player levitation 255, and then they just can't move um, up or down. And it, that way they don't fall because of gravity. So, um, what else? Let's see here. Um, ability to edit the selector. So that's down here. You can see... Once this is all compressed and everything and, you know, nice and, and concise, this is basically the layout of the control panel. So it's a lot more compact, a lot nicer to look at, I think. Um, of course, open to suggestions. So um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let me see. Edit selector. Yes. Um, this allows you to also move entities along a camera path, which is really good for entity pathing. So right here, this is just an example I was testing at a tag equals high. It will not support at R. And I also wanted to add something where it doesn't support um, something else, but I don't remember what it is. Anyway, um, yeah, so you can customize this stuff here. Um, I'm actually probably going to make it so that tags are not supported, only scores are supported, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Um, but anyway, uh, this allows for entity pathing so that you can, like, do at e type equals pig name equals, I don't know, George, so that instead of having the player move along the cutscene path, you can actually have a pig go along the entity path. So that's going to be really, really helpful for custom maps um, so that you can have, you know, like 10 of these entities going on their own paths. And then if you want, you can even have the player doing their own path at the same time. Very, very cool stuff. Um, I'm actually not sure whether I can have two cutscenes going at once. I'll have to check on that. Um, if I can't, I will make it so that you can. Um, anyway, uh, so 1.10 plus official support, of course. Um, I say 1.9 plus just because nothing changes from the 1.9 to 1.10 version. Um, added a feature to the post-cutscene game mode option to just stay in the same game mode you were in in the cutscene. So, survival, creative, adventure, spectator, or just leave the game mode the same as C5, which is the game mode during the cutscene. Um, again, I'm not going over features that are already there in the old version, um, I'm, adding a, I'm adding a much simpler and more resource-efficient version of the hashtag back function, which is going to go right here, um, that will be just for single player, in addition to the old multiplayer hashtag back function. Um, I'm also adding an ability to add up to two custom commands, it may only end up being one, we'll see, that will automatically fire at the end of the cutscene. So a lot of people ask, like, how do I do something when the cutscene is over? And... I told people how to do it, but this is just going to be easier. It's just a post-cutscene command. Um, let's see. Uh, ability to make new cutscenes starting from a certain step count. This is not implemented yet, but you can see here uh, the starting step count. In case you want to add on to a previous cutscene already installed in your world, you can use the final step count of the old one found in the box below. So when you fill out everything, when you're ready to generate your cutscene, this box will say the final step count. And if you want to continue the old cutscene, and you've like cleared the spreadsheet already, you can just type in that value right here, and it will allow you to continue immediately, automatically, after the old cutscene is over. Um, so, and input it here to continue counting up on the scoreboard so that it's all the same. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Um, this also means that it won't automatically install the setup and reset commands because they already exist on the first cutscene part. So that might be a little bit more difficult. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. Anyway, since it supports many more points and commands, I'm going to need to add support for multiple one-command installations, just because at a certain point, there's no way I can fit it in one command. 
Um, it's been working so far, but you know, if you have a hundred different paths, I'm going to need to add support for that. I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet, but it'll probably be a separate sheet that has the output on it. And this will probably, rather than just being a cell, it'll be a button to generate it. Um, custom path names and overall time control. A, lot, a certain number of seconds for each path to use. I already talked about that. That's down here. So path one will allow you to have 60 seconds. Um, you know, path whatever will allow you to have 10 seconds, however you want to do it. Um, so let's see. Simple and easy movability and reorganization of paths. I already talked about that. Each path has its own spreadsheet, which you can duplicate to make more up to 100. The main controls are on a separate sheet called the master control panel. I already talked about that. Um, buttons to automatically clear path names and um, and order and order and a button to automatically clear individual time settings. So I can click this and it will clear everything in this column, this and it'll clear everything in the other column. Um, better error detection and handling. System will be much clearer about what the error is if there is one and is better at detecting them. Um, I already talked about not getting rid of the old one. Individual point time control. Control time between points in, e in any path, either by percentages or total allotted path time or by seconds. So, for example, here, these are this is just some example things. These, these, some of these are notes to myself. So what we do here, percentage of path time, you can choose how you want to do it. So if I do percentage of path time or time between points, time between points is going to cause an error because here it says current totals exceed allotted path time by one second or more. Um, here, we, you see we only allotted 60 seconds. So this, if you add all these up, they exceed 60. It should be at the bottom. Oh, oh, well, it's not at the bottom because there's an error. Um, but if we switch to percentage, so um, also to make it a little bit clearer, the point travel locations, that's not something you edit. That's just something to help you understand what's happening. So 40% of the time that it takes for path one to execute, we will be moving from point number one to point number two. 10% of the time, we'll be moving to point number two to point number three, and so on and so forth. One of the things I really like about this is if we delete this here, right? So now we are at less than 100%. You can see our current total is 82.27%. And this can be as many as you want. We just press this button. And depending on whether it's path time, percentage, or seconds, it will automatically fill in the remaining path time so that all the remaining ones that don't have a time already set will receive an equal number in order to reach 100% or the allotted path time. I know there's a lot of information. It might not all make sense. I'm sorry about that. There'll be a more, there'll be a much clearer video when it actually comes out. Um, let's see, customizable rounding methods when dealing with decimals. Like I said, this is an advanced version, so I'm adding a lot more features, some that you may not even want to use. Um, because this is really meant for extremely fine-tuning your cutscene. So um, you have round up, round down, standard rounding, and smart rounding. Smart rounding will automatically select the appropriate rounding method to get as close as possible to the target step count dictated by the allotted time for the path. Now what that means basically is that it's going to get... Just because Minecraft is not measured in seconds, it's measured in game ticks, sometimes it doesn't work out evenly because of the number of points you have and the amount of time you allot for each. It just doesn't work out evenly, so you have to decide what you want to do with those extra ticks. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way I can get the user to specify where they want the remainder ticks added on, but that might not happen just because I don't think there's really a place for that in the GUI. Anyway, um, option to use the new auto point alignment system for each path. Now this, one of the staples of the cutscene generator, one of the things that makes it so great in my opinion, is that unlike all of the cutscene generators before in the community that required so many thousands of command blocks, these only require the standard ones plus one for each point. And that's just so cool to me. But one of the things that this causes is because we're dealing with decimals often and we're dealing with ticks, which are only 1 20th of a second, it's very hard to get exact, which is why we just did the whole thing with the rounding. So one of the things, so you may end up being, you know, less than a block off from where you want to be exactly. And no one has actually noticed that so far in the old version because it's usually just completely unnoticeable. Um, but if you set this, so default accuracy is the way it used to work. Auto align is adds X commands to your structure. So auto align will automatic, automatically add an exact teleport, so a absolute teleport command, to realign you perfectly with your specified point. This will add X number of commands to your structure where X is the number of specified points. Default accuracy will allow for minutely small rounding errors. 
So that that's probably going to add a lot of commands to your structure, but it will ensure it's you know exactly where it should be. Um, again, it's probably going to be unnoticeable unless you have you know a, a lot of points. Uh, what's next? Very cool and useful button to automatically, I already explained this, but I'll, I'll read the description, to automatically autofill the remaining times and percentages on any given path. In other words, if you specify that travel from point 0.5 to point 0.6 will be 12.34 seconds, and you want all the other points in the path to just be equal times, pressing this button will automatically fill in the times for all remaining points to bring you up to the exact allotted time for that path. Uh, total indicators, so no matter where you are on the spreadsheet, you'll be able to see at least one current total indicator on the left here. Um, changes to percent or seconds total, depending on what you choose. Uh, button to automatically reset all path data, timings and coordinates and everything, that's right here. Um, uh, button to reset the, just the points, button to reset just the timings. Um, more efficient rotation handling, so in the past, uh, we I had a bug in the cutscene generator, which I only recently fixed, actually, in the latest version, uh, which... Um, causes you to take the long way around in order to do change your rotation. Um, I fixed that, but this one is actually going to do it a lot more efficiently. Um, possible feature I may or may not add, uh, we already talked about that, total indicator for number of points. That's actually at the bottom here. Uh, total number of points equals six. Let's see. Um, maybe a possible feature, support for relative coordinates as point coordinates. So coordinates would be relative to the coordinates of the previous point. I don't think that's going to happen, but it might if enough people want it. Um, cleaner interface and easier to use. Um, also, we already talked about that. Saving on many characters in a command by only needing the selector in a few places. So rather than using the same selector for every command, we only need it a couple of times. Um, more efficient teleports. I'm no longer going to be doing two teleports on the player. I'm still researching whether this is just produces the same effect or not, but it definitely saves on lag, which, I mean, by a noticeable amount. So it'll no longer do two teleports on the player. In the past, it was doing one teleport uh, by teleporting to the next place on the path, and the second teleport was teleporting them to the area effect cloud corrector. Now it's just going to be one, which is just teleporting them to the area effect cloud. Um, ability, ability to specify the maximum length of the command structure. That's going to be right here. Max length of command structure. How many blocks long should the structure be cut to before moving on to a new value? Just for simplicity's sake, it's got to be 14 or greater. Um, warns player, so the, these, because they're up to 100 paths, these are going to be very tall structures if you use a lot of paths. Because um, it's going to be using multiple repeat blocks so that they are only active when they need to be, which is going to save on a lot of lag. Um, Warns player about maximum one structure in their world if they choose not to use the camera ID system, which was a problem in the past. Uh, I don't really need to go into that. And also includes instructions for stopping a cutscene in the middle. To cancel cutscene midway, slash scoreboard player set at E, score step min equals zero step, and this will be customized depending on what your cutscene is. So that's the list of features so far. There's a lot more stuff to be done. I finished all of the path coordin coordinates on here, so like... These, these things are done, the path customizations, pretty much. Um, I still need to go in here and calculate. Basically, the only thing left to do is calculate where the command blocks actually go in relation to the one command installation block. Um, and after that, it'll really be time for testing. So this should be coming in the next couple of weeks, maybe a month max. Uh, but I'm really excited about it, and I'm so glad I got to show you guys what I've been working on. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you are enjoying your summers, and I will see you all next time.